Welcome back to the template tutorial series. This time we look at how to use Cubase expression maps. Expression maps are an integral part of my setup. Admittedly, it takes a little while to set up expression maps initially, but once that's done, you stand to gain a fair bit of time from improved workflow. In fact, it's probably one of the most important upgrades in efficiency that I've ever experienced. I use a lot of libraries that rely on key switches or similar articulation changing mechanisms. When it comes to working with large numbers of articulations on a single track, expression maps do a fantastic job. Although I think that they also have one or two minor issues, which I'll mention towards the end of this video. Alright, let's look at an example of how expression maps are set up in my template. Here we have the first horn from Orchestral Tools Berlin Brass Library. You can assign an expression map to any MIDI or instrument track. You do so from the expression map tab in the inspector. This is where you can open a drop down menu of existing expression maps and simply click on one to assign it to the currently selected track. Let's open expression map setup and have a look at how it works under the hood. Let's find the one that was used for the first horn of Berlin Brass. As you can see here, each articulation has its own slot, and each slot is activated by receiving a MIDI message from Lima. For that, I use low notes starting from C-2. Once it has received a message, each slot then sends out another MIDI message, which can be a key switch, MIDI CC, MIDI program change, or it can switch MIDI channels. So you can essentially see expression maps as the middleman between your MIDI controller and the instrument patch in contact, or whichever sample player you are using. So what exactly happens if I select the staccato articulation in Lima? The expression map receives this change from Lima on note F sharp minus two, and sends out key switch F minus two on MIDI channel three. I will now switch over to VE Pro and show you the corresponding contact instances. Here's the first horn. You can see that on channel 2 is the legato patch and channel 3 is a 12 slot capsule multi with the staccato articulation assigned to the slot corresponding to key switch F-2. Let's switch back to Cubase and look at expression map setup in a bit more detail. I'll quickly run you through the creation of a new expression map. To add a new map, you click on the add map button up here. And to add a new slot to the currently selected expression map, you can use the add sound slot button here. This newly created slot has no key switch assignment, no articulation assignment, and only a default name. First, let's define which key switch activates this slot. The default name tells me that this is slot number 21. I'm using consecutive low notes for my key switches, starting with C-2 which is MIDI note 0. So slot 21 will use MIDI note number 20. Next, I'll show you a fast way to create and assign articulations to different slots. First, delete the default name. Then click in the Art 1 field and choose Custom Articulation. You'll see a new articulation show up in the list on the bottom right. Click on its name, choose Text, and type in your desired name. Now, the only thing left to do is to configure the output mapping section of your selected slot, where you can add any output messages that you need, key switches, channel changes, and so on. There's one more thing I should mention at this point. As you can see, I've set C-2 as the root of my key switches. However, this means that instruments that have a very low range may start to clash with higher key switches. My solution here is that once an instrument is selected, Lima also defines the key switch ranges. Selecting a cello, for example, will change half of the articulation switches and put them above the instrument's range. I'll show you what I mean. Here are the cello from Spitfire Symphonic Strings. As you can see, the low key switches stop with D sharp 0 and then jump to A sharp 5 which is above the range of the celli. That in a nutshell is how expression maps work. While they introduce a fair bit of added complexity, and it takes a little bit of time to set them up as well, expression maps do come with some serious benefits. 
First, if your library was reliant on key switches, then regular key switches are not retroactive. I'll show you what I mean. I recorded a short phrase and then duplicated it. On the duplicate track, I deactivated expression maps so that I could use regular old key switches. Let's open up MIDI editor and scroll all the way down to find the key switches. Here we have F-2 triggering the staccato articulation and D-2 triggering marcato. I'm going to play this phrase now from the beginning. Everything works as intended. However, the last articulation that we activated via a key switch was marcato. So now if I were to skip back, but to the middle of the phrase and hit play again, then all of these notes will be played back as marcato samples. Not being retroactive is one of the biggest problems of regular key switches. Expression maps, however, are applied to every note. You can start playback wherever you want, and you don't have to worry about having to catch the key switch in your playback. If you use regular key switches, then looking at them in your MIDI editor only shows you regular MIDI notes, which are mostly far out of range. Those notes don't exactly tell you a lot about which articulation they are triggering. To find out what the low note F-2 does, you would need to open your contact instance and check it. But if you're using expression maps, then you can display the names of each articulation just below the MIDI notes. This is extremely useful as it gives you a visual reference to which articulations are being triggered at any point. It's also very quick to change articulation assignments. Any kind of complex configuration is entirely possible, and it does not add as much clutter as a bunch of notes down in the key switch range would. Using expression maps also lets you standardize your input methods and design them to your liking. For example, regardless of what key switch range various libraries might respond to, you can have expression maps always responding to the same keys. So you could set up every string library that you have to play a long sustained note with the same key switch. And if your library did not have key switches at all, only individual patches, then now you could create your own multi key switch patch by simply loading a number of patches into the same contact instance and giving them different channel numbers. Expression maps can then switch between these MIDI channels. You can set up nearly anything that has the ability to send MIDI to control expression maps. You could use a phone, a tablet, a MIDI controller, a foot pedal, you name it. Or you could even switch them directly inside Cubase with your mouse. Although that approach admittedly isn't really suitable for live playing. Setting up expression maps is time consuming. And even though I highly recommend making your own from scratch, you can get a bit of a head start by using expression maps that are publicly shared on music production forums. Also, some of the developers have started including expression maps with their libraries. But mostly, I think you're going to want to customize things to your own liking. So I feel it's best and perhaps fastest to simply make your own. That brings me to the one aspect of using expression maps that I'm not entirely happy with. The interface for managing them, the expression map setup, could really do with a bit of an overhaul. Both the graphic interface and the functionality could be improved. Frankly, the whole thing is a little bit cumbersome to use at the moment. But if you put up with that, then it does get the job done perfectly, and it does bring a couple of very useful features to the table. For managing any libraries that rely on key switches, or generally large numbers of articulations, Expression Maps is an excellent tool. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I'll see you in the next one.